one side, hey guys over there, how are you? All right, you ever hear them say, son of the soil? You ever hear that term? I'm not talking to these people behind me, I'm talking to my friends across the road. You ever hear the term son of the soil? Okay, this is Carleen. I am a girl and I am daughter of the soil. I was born two, road, two houses from there. I used to live down here, Mr. Downey, and I used to live over Painter. I am no stranger. Me too. So who could it be? Who would be the best one to welcome you all? Okay, so on behalf of the Yellow Seventh Day Adventist Church, I do welcome you all in the hearing of our voice. Those who are in the houses, those who are in their yards, those who are in the business places, mommy feeding your baby. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for being a part of us. Welcome, and we don't want to welcome you here alone, no. You see, after we leave here today, our doors at the Yellow Seventh Day Adventist Church, they are wide open. The White Horses Yellow Seventh Day Adventist Church, wide open. The Philadelphia Seventh Day Adventist Church, wide open. The Light Seventh Day Adventist Church, Albion, Woodburn, anywhere you want to go. We are all there to welcome you with open arms. So have a blessed evening. Thank you for sharing our company. May the good Lord continue to bless you all. What a mighty God.
sad when it seems that my friend shop. When I was coming from shop, 
I met and the pastors who studied with me, who brought me into the Adventist church ever. Yes. And when the, I saw the man, I almost dig the earth and got on in it because I know I weren't supposed to be dressing that way. But the love that Seventh-day Adventist people have, I just could not resist it because the pastor did not bash me. He just took me in love and said, my dear sister, you should not be wearing that on the road. Now let me tell you something. Pan-side people, pan-side young people. Now I'm going to address the young men who is rubbing out your hand middle. <laughs> I used to do that as well. I used to rub out my hand middle. I used to smoke ganja. I used to burn chill on pipe. Yes. I used to do everything that is bad on the face of this earth. Amen. But thank God for the man Christ Jesus. Amen. So we are here in your community. We are here in your hearing. This evening to invite you to this man Christ Jesus that has saved our lives, that has saved me. Don't think that you're too far. Whether you're shacking up with someone, whether you're living under the tree, whether you're cool coat or whatever, my God can fix it. So he fixed me, so I'm inviting you upon side to come. Come see a man, this man, when you meet this man, you will never ever regret it. So listen to us this evening. Come out and worship with us. Let us all glorify his name because he's able to save you. Amen. Amen. Let's have the preacher. to say at this time good afternoon to all those who are only hearing of my voice at this time in this little area. Pun side. But even before I start to talk, I want to just say to everybody, for those who are only hearing of my voice, maybe you are not understanding, but we have left the comfort of the church because we want to be in the community at this time to tell you about Jesus Christ. And guess what? You may be in the comfort of your homes and because of COVID-19, normally you don't want to come out Elder Fagan to come sit with us. But you can't come because of COVID-19. Guess what? We have two different areas in which you can go and to watch the program right now, live and in living colors. So I want to listen carefully. If you hear my voice now, you can go on to James Media. Just go on to YouTube and type in what? James Media. And you can be able to watch this program live right now. You can also go on to Facebook and type in Yellas Seventh day Adventist Church. And you can be able to watch this program live and in living colors, Sister Douglas. So let me tell you again. Go on to James Media. You can go onto the Facebook page of Yellow Seventh Adventist Church and watch this program. And guess what? You won't miss even a minute of this presentation. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks because of your grace and mercy. We can stand here in your presence. A lot of this time we are in a tropical country, so the heat is on. But Lord, we are giving you thanks because it could have been something else. And so, Lord, even though we may be feeling a bit warm, we are thanking you, Lord, because you have somehow tapered that heat with a bit of breeze. And so, Lord, we have to give you thanks. And for the benefit of those persons who are in their homes at this time, who are listening to our voices, we are saying, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to somehow touch someone in their homes at this time. And somehow, Lord, help them understand that they have to allow the Holy Spirit to touch them so they can give their lives over to you. 
as they listen to the word this evening. We have come to testify of only you and you only. It is not about us because we are the sinners saved by your grace. But we are hoping, Lord, by the end of this presentation, someone, Lord, will give their lives over to you before it is too late. Touch my lips, Lord. So the words I present will be from you in your sons and Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. At this time, I'm saying once more that I'm thanking you for allowing us to be in your community. I'm not too sure how far the sound is going. But as far as the sound is traveling, I hear us going far. And once you're hearing our voices, I'm saying to you at this time, just because you're in your home, and I know that many of you are busy, some might be having your evening dinner, I'm not sure what you're doing. Some might be tuning in at this time to the Olympics. And then I'm talking to somebody who knows about the Olympics, the church is quiet. Somebody might be tuning in at this time to the Olympics, but whatever you're doing, I'm saying what? Just give us a little bit of your time so we can talk to you about Jesus Christ. Just give us a little bit of your time so we can tell you about the man who created this world. Just give us just a little bit of your time so we can tell you about the man who died on Calvary's cross for you and I. Just give us a little bit of your time as we testify of how God has been good to us and how he has been good to you. And how you can give your life over to him. I want to speak to you today. Under a caption which is not strange. And I want to before I even give you the, the, the topic. I want to go back to the Olympics. Uh, Brother Dacus. It's a couple of weeks. It's a couple of weeks or a couple of days. Maybe one or two days ago. We would have heard the good news of what is taking place in China. Am I correct? In Japan, Tokyo, sorry, I'm thinking of, yes, in Tokyo. The good news of that Jamaicans are doing well. I want to tell you something. While I was at home, my wife came to me yesterday and she said, log in on your phone to Google and tell me what you're seeing. I don't know how many of you saw it. But no, no, not that one. When I logged into Google yesterday, you know Google normally have a little graphics there, advertising something. Guess what Google was advertising as the main thing on the graphics? Jamaica. And the Jamaican flag flying high. I don't think I get what I'm saying. When I looked on Google, this is an international company and they are flying the flag of Jamaica high. So I have to wear my Jamaican colors this evening. I don't think I get what I'm saying. I don't think I get what I'm saying. Jamaica is flying high. But I'm coming here to tell you today, just as our Jamaica seem to be flying high, you can fly high with Jesus. I don't even get what I'm saying. I watched the Olympics, and I'm seeing our Jamaicans, they are doing well. And I remember Anne's apartment, and I'm going somewhere. I don't know if you know who's Anne's apartment, but Anne's apartment is from this parish, St. Thomas. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Anne's apartment is from this parish, St. Thomas, and in Tokyo, Anne's apartment was running. But let me give you some more information. For those who are Murphy High School past students, Anne's apartment is from Murphy High School too. So those who come from all the other school, you know, they go to school let people don't go to Murphy High School. I don't even get what I'm saying. But I want to give you a bigger story. Anne's apartment went to Tokyo. He's in there now. He ran his race 110 meter hurdles. And in the interview, when they were saying, but I didn't expect him, I can tell you straight forward, I didn't expect him to win based on what I saw in, in his performance before. But he won. Amen. And when he won the race, he said, well, he was expecting to win. I'm saying, what a show off. <laughs> I don't even get what I'm saying. But then he gave a story, and I went on Facebook, Facebook, and I found a story yesterday. He said that, and why you listen to me go, because I'm getting somewhere. He said in the Facebook story yesterday, he said he almost didn't make it to the race. I want you to listen good. He went on a bus that was marked yes to go to the stadium. But as you know, over there, there are different stadiums for different... Huh? We call them again, disciplines. 
So some doing the rowing, some doing gymnastics. He went on the wrong bus for the semi-finals. I want your father man getting somewhere. And when he went on the bus, he said he was he had the the, the, the earphone in his ears listening to music. So he wasn't even hearing the instructions. I'm going somewhere. And so he went on the wrong bus, but when he looked up, he saw something that said stadium, but the wrong stadium. And when he went, he was water stadium, he said what they were doing, rowing. Wrong stadium for the semi-finals. He said when he spoke to the people, they said to him, hey, you have to take a bus and go back to the village, then take a bus from the village and then go to the stadium. He said if I did that, I would have missed the semi-finals. I'm going somewhere. But he said, a good Samaritan, a little lady, a little lady, a little lady who was there, he saw the lady, and he went to the lady. The lady directed him to a taxi, but the taxi is there, you can't take it unless you have pre-booked the taxi. The little lady gave him some fear to take a regular taxi. I want you to follow me. He took the regular taxi. I was able to make it to the stadium to go into the semi-finals. I don't you get what I'm saying. I'm going somewhere. He made it to the semi-finals. He made it to the finals. And now he's a champion in the 110 meter hurdles. I'm going somewhere. So yesterday, he said he had to find the lady. So he went on a bus, the right bus this time. And he went back to the village and he found the lady. And after finding the lady, he said, thank you. And he showed her the gold medal that he got. And he gave her a t-shirt. And he said he gave her about the money that he gave her to take a taxi home. I'm going somewhere. Amen. I'm here to tell you about a man who's called Jesus. Amen. I'm going to tell you about a man who, guess what? It doesn't make a difference who you are, where you are, whether you win gold medal or not, because guess what? That lady don't even know who's on the parchment, but my God know who you are. And he's not watching who you are and where you have been. I'm here to tell you today, my God is here to save you. Amen. And so we have left the comfort of our homes and we are saying what? We have come just like our department and we are seeking you out. Amen. And we are saying, come see a man. Come and know this man, Jesus Christ. If you want to win gold, you have to know who Jesus Christ is. And the gold we are giving you is not the one you can just wear around your neck. But my Bible tells me that when you get to heaven, you're going to walk on gold. So most of us in this world today, we are worrying about the things of this world. We're worrying about cars. We're worrying about houses. My God says, guess what? All you have to do is just serve me. And one day he says, I'm going to appear a place for you. And I will come back and receive you unto myself. And guess what? Where I am, you are going to be also. So don't worry about what the world has to offer. We have come to tell you about Jesus. And so my theme is, whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming. Whether Aunt's apartment was ready or not, the race would have been run with or without him. But I'm telling you about my Jesus. He's saying, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I am ready for you. Amen. And whether you are ready or not, I died on Calvary's cross for you. I don't think you're on with us. You, you, you don't understand the God we serve. He died on Calvary's cross for you, whether you're ready or not. And he says, guess what? I'm coming to take you home, whether you're ready or not. And so the song where it says, whether you're ready or not, my Jesus is coming. But Abraham, whether you're ready or not, he's coming again. Whether you're ready or not, my Jesus is coming. Whether you're ready or not, ready or not, is coming again. Whether you're ready or not, my Jesus is coming. Whether you're ready or not, is coming again. Whether you're ready or not, ready or not, my Jesus is coming. Whether you're ready or not. Ready or not, he's coming again. I'm here to tell you this evening, Ponsai, 
young men and young women. My God is coming. Amen. And so we have come to let you know that we want you to be ready. Because guess what? Whether you're ready or not, is coming. Amen. I want to take you back to the beginning. God created this world out of nothing. I want you to go, you can go to Genesis and you can read it. You can take your time to go to the story in Genesis. God created this earth out of nothing. And when he created this earth, he, listen good, he created that out of love for us. And he created everything and he spoke about it. All he did was to talk and everything else came into being. But I want to jump down to the story and it says here, Brother Brown, that when he came to make man, he said he knelt down in the ground, in the dust of the ground, and he formed man in his image. Out of the dust of the ground. That is the God we serve. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. So I come today to tell you in Pansa this time, God wants to have a relationship with you. Many of us, many of us who are in this community, I can tell you, many of you, you once walked to the walls of the church, walked to the doors of the church. Many of you in this community, once you were active in your churches, but somehow you have allowed the cares of this world. I see my good friend Hans walking by. Many of us allow the cares of this world to get us down, Sister Bowen. We get so busy with the cares of the world, we forget that we are made in the image of God. And some of us, I have to touch this one, many of us, we don't like ourselves so much, so we start to put a little cream there, a little cream there, to change your color. But I'm saying to you today, young man and young woman, love yourself because you're made in the image of God. Amen. Don't let the image of this world fool you. One singer, can't remember his name, but I guess the young people know his name. I guess if I ask him, he'll tell me. There's one singer famous singer the one who sing what old tone rule what's his name what is his name what is his name linas lily nas lily nas little nas i never know some nas but it's man you know why you understand the world that we're in we are living in a world where these are the person who are leading all young people but this young man doesn't follow the divine plan because this young man believes that he must be in love with another man. I wonder if you get what I'm saying. But my Bible tells me that God created one man out of the dust of the earth. And then he went ahead and he put the man to sleep, took a river out of his side, and he created a woman. One man. For one woman. So many of us, you know, as we listen to the community, we think that we can't serve God because we have to have five and six and seven women. But my God said, what is enough? What is enough? And I will bless you. And I will keep you. That is what we're here to tell you today. Young man and young woman, give yourself over to Jesus. Don't let the world fool you. Many of the movie stars Famous people, the ones who have money, they want to give you the impression that you have to sleep with another man to make it. Another woman to a woman to make it. And that's the impression they give. But my God says, woman, one woman. And I can tell you, after 23 years of marriage, it has not failed me yet. I don't think I get what I'm saying. And I'm sure that I look worse off than nobody else. So I'm telling you from experience, when you serve God, He stands up for you. When you trust in God, He stands up for you. I'm not just coming to tell you the Bible says. I'm telling you what God has done for me. And if you can do it for me, I tell you you can do it for you again. I'm here to tell somebody today, God created you in His image. And therefore you are to serve Him. And when he created this world, he's so good to us, he gave everything to our comfort and he gave us dominion over it. And so all we have to do is what? Serve him. But can I say something to you? The devil has a plan. God just gave some simple instructions. Don't eat from this tree. Because you shall surely die, Sister Stephanie. But he never listen. But I want you to look at what is happening in the story now. I want to take my time and go through the story. God gave them specific instruction not to eat. But, but, but the devil, oh, Satan, he came. And he 
that he came to Eve and Elder said appetite and said but you listen to that man Jesus you shall not surely die but my God said you shall surely die he said no man he doesn't want you to be like him and that is what the world teaches us if you don't do some things you can't be rich so I want to be rich so I do anything to be rich I want to look pretty so I do anything to my skin to look pretty that's what the world teaches do anything you want and so the devil tricked Eve to eat and after tricking Eve, guess what? She went to her wife, to her husband. This is a hussy. I've eaten. And after eating, guess what? I want to take some too. And out of love for a wife, you know, he had an eat as well. But I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. And that is why we are here today as seventh day Adventist Christians believing in the Bible. I want you to look at what we are doing. We are following what Jesus did. And after they ate, they realized that they were naked yeah. before they never knew they were naked and they started to hide there was a time when they had communion personal communion with jesus christ they were hiding from jesus many of us are in our sinful state we start to hide from church why do we hide from church because we know the state we are in i don't even get what i'm saying we are hiding from church we run away from church and so the songwriter says when say about six men bringing me back, you know that song there? Is it a run from the preacher man? Six men bringing me back? I want to say to someone on Facebook. I want to say to someone on James Media. I want to say to someone in Ponsal. Don't wait on six men to bring you back in a casket. Give your life to Jesus before it's too late. Now is the time. Your salvation is here. Give your life to Jesus. Don't wait until you are dead because you can't do it then. You can't praise Jesus when you're dead. You can't ask forgiveness when you're dead. And so while you're alive, give your life to Jesus. While you're alive, praise him. And that is what we are doing today. We are alive. And before I close my eyes, I want to tell you one side, give your life to Jesus. Before I close my eyes, I want to say to somebody, I know you want to walk, and you want to be in church, and you know what church is about, you know the Bible, you understand the Bible, but the devil has you wrapped up in sin, and tangled up in sin, and you tell yourself, I can't get free. But I look at Brother Duncan, who has given his testimony, and he has broken free from the devil. He has broken free from the devil. I see many Christians who have walked in the world who have broken free from the devil's suspense. You can break free. All you have to do is to trust Jesus and he can lead you. And so God created everything perfect. He created one man, one woman. The devil came, but I want you to follow me carefully. Follow me carefully now. Watch carefully. Jesus came when he started to call. I want you to watch me now. My God is an omnipresent God. He's an all-seeing God. You don't believe that there's anything that you do that my God don't know before you ever do it. And so they decide to hide from him. And so he called Adam. He called Eve. And they hid from Jesus. Boy, look how God is lovely. The one who created the world. The one who created man and woman. The man who the cook and decided, hey, I'm tired of you too because you're doing the wrong thing, and he could have destroyed them. He called them one by one. He called them. Where are you? Where are you? He called them. And that's why we are here today. We are saying to you, we are calling you. We are telling you, come and see a man, Jesus Christ. We are calling you. Jesus called them. When they came, but you know, guess what? There's a penalty for not obeying Jesus Christ. Amen. They found out they were naked. Many of us in this world, we are naked without Jesus. I don't do what I'm saying. Many of us don't understand we are naked without Jesus. For many of us, unfortunately, for every walk we walk, we have to look behind us. Am I talking truth in Jamaica now? Many of our young men 
And young women, be courageous and give your life to Jesus and get some involved in things that are not all like Jesus. In the walk you walk, you have to look behind you. Because you're locked up with Jesus. I'm saying to you, if you want to walk free, give your life to Jesus. Don't get us a mix up in this world. Because this world is trouble. But Jesus wants to give you freedom. So when you want to walk with Jesus, all you have to do is just give your heart to him. He's not saying that you have to be perfect. He says, come as you are. And he'll make you into what he wants you to be once you simply allow him to lead you. Amen. And so he called them. But there was a little problem. There was a little sanction there. They couldn't live in the garden anymore. God asked them to step outside of the garden. They couldn't live there anymore because they had broken his commandments. But even though they had to leave the garden, God still spent time with them. Amen. I want to jump down the line a bit. And I want to think of Calvary's cross. Even though we are sinners, even though each day we do the wrong things, Jesus Christ went on Calvary's cross to die for you and for me. Amen. There is no greater love that you can ever find than the love of Jesus Christ. There's no greater love you can find than the love of Jesus Christ. One who says, even though you are a sinner, I'm going to die for you anyway. Even though you are straight for me, I'm going to die for you anyway. That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. And all we are saying today, Sister Ingrid, we are saying to the hearing of my voice at this time in Ponside, young man, young woman, come see a man. Because whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming. Amen. Whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming. Let's come and know this man, Jesus. Amen. Many years ago, the antediluvians, they laughed at Noah when he built the ark. What a foolish man. What a foolish man. God said that the people were getting wicked. And found grace in the, in the sight of, of Noah. But guess what? If God destroyed the world then. Because people were wicked. And destroyed the earth by a flood then. And what you found was that. In that. Only Noah. His wife. His three sons. And their wives were sold in the ark. The animals came in the ark two by two. Huh? For those that are unclean. Seven by seven. For those that are clean. And they went in the ark. But why are you following me carefully? If God destroyed the earth then. Because men were evil. Why are you following me God? Let's talk about today's world. In this world today, men are so evil. You look at a man too hard, it's not the first time anymore a man cuss and war. Him going for a gun for come kill you. Because you look at him too hard. Oh, what do you I'm saying? We live in a world where men have got so wicked. That you can take a baby that knows nothing and shoot a baby. I wonder if you get what I'm saying. We are living in a world where evil is so rampant. We are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We are lovers of evil more than lovers of God. You invite a man to come to church and say, boy, I can't come to church. We can't go to church. But when you are telling me that we have a dance around the road, and I have some big ox being a man and bounty, and I don't even know where the other big ox come in. Everybody is there. And who don't have money, find money to be there. 
but tell him to come to Jesus first. He can't make it. He can't make it. But he'll find the money to go anywhere to drink anything. But tell him to come to Jesus. Jesus says what? All I'm asking. Just give your life to me. I don't want anything else. Just give your life to me. For your first. Because I'm already paid the cost. I died on Calvary's cross for you. And I'm saying to Ponce at this time, men who are here my boss, women who are here my boss, give your life to Jesus before it's too late. Don't let the world fool you. No matter how pretty the car is, it gives trouble. If you drive the wrong way and crash it, it mash up. Talk to me now. No matter how pretty the house is, it starts to rotten down. No matter what you decide you want to spell on, after a while it goes away. The Bible says, what? To profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul. Many of us are running down the riches of this world. For what? One night of pleasure. Amen. And that's it. But God is saying, what I have to offer you will last you for a lifetime. What I have to give you will last you for a lifetime. Facebook, you and those who are on James Media, what I have to give you on side, Jesus said will last you for a lifetime. Yeah. No matter how, 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 how good the food is, and you spend all the money, and you feel good, in the next three or less hours, you're hungry again. <laughs> but my God is saying, I am not asking you for money. All I'm saying is, when you come to me, what I have to offer your young sister Green will last you for a lifetime. What I have to offer you, my dear sister, 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 Venetia, will last you for a lifetime. All I'm saying what? Just come to Jesus. Again, I say to you, I stand here as a testament of what God can do for you. It is not because of my might. It is not because of my strength. It is because of what God has been doing for me. Because I've allowed him to lead my life. I'm saying to you young men. I'm saying to you young women. In the hail of my voice. Give a life to Jesus. When Noah spoke to the Andaluvians. Those in the days of the flood. And he gave them the warning. They laughed at him. They laughed at him. But when the rain start to fall, and when they realize that the place start to flood, all of a sudden, Travis, everybody run into the ark. I don't know if you remember those days when you were younger. Maybe you're not so young yet, you're still the youngest. But for the older ones, you remember those days of when you used to go downtown. But I figure I know those days. And when you go downtown, and when you're ready to come back home, what you realize? The amount of people down there to get into one bus. People used to walk all the way from downtown up to where place name again? Where, where, place, where place name? What theater? Some go round there, so some go from what? No man further up. Some went to win what road? I walk. I I walk all the way from downtown up to Bellevue just to get to the bus to get to home. Uh, when the bus stop on the foot, instead of the bus full already. I don't even get what I'm saying. I don't really get what I'm saying. I don't even get what I'm saying. That is what caught the people in Noah's days. When they decided to knock, there was nothing. The door was shut. The bus was full. God locked the door. I'm saying to someone may hear my voice today. Don't wait on God to lock the door on you. I don't think it what I'm saying. When God shuts the door, your time is up. And when you're young or you're old, your time is up. And there's nothing we can do for you. So guess what? Guess what? We are called into the district at this time to say, accept Jesus before it is too late, Sister Ocean. Accept Jesus before it is too late. Amen. There are many persons who have heard the message, but they're, they're, they're almost persuaded. Can I say something to you? You hear my voice now. 
You can hear me right now. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you now. But I came on. You can hear my voice now. And many others, you can hear my voice now. Guess what? Give your heart to Jesus while you can hear now. Amen. While the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, give your heart to Jesus right now. You know where I'm wrapping down? At the end of all of that, and the flood came, only eight people were saved. Noah, his wife, three sons, and their wives. God made a promise. I want you to understand. God made a promise. He said, the next time, I'm making a covenant with you, Noah. I'm making a covenant with you because guess what? Next time, there won't be water, but there will be fire next time. Can I talk to somebody today? You look in the world right now. I'm talking about, let's go to Matthew 24 now. There are many signs that are pointing that Christ is about to come. If you spend some time to go and watch the news, go on YouTube, go on Facebook, go anywhere you want to go, worldwide, floods are taking over major cities. And the reporters and the historians, everybody saying they have never seen so much floods in their lifetime in places that they never expected. So, in places that they never expected, hurricanes are intensifying, tornadoes are intensifying, men getting wicked and wicked each day. My Bible says, when you see these things, now why are you listening to me good now? He never said, it's coming, it's there, you know. He says, look up, because your redemption draw it near. All these things are pointed to one thing that my Jesus is about to put his appearing. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you faithful in all that you do? Are you ready for Jesus to come? One side. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you allowing the cares of the world to take on your life so much that you don't know who Jesus is? Are you ready for Jesus to come? A day is coming and my God will come to take over this world. And those that are filthy will be filthy still. If you don't, you, you know the Jesus sign, you're going to be filthy. But those who are righteous will be righteous still. My God is coming to take this world. Are you ready for Jesus to come? And so at this time, there are many of us who are listening to his word. There are many of us who in your homes, but you're listening, but around, but I can't believe you're listening to his word. And you know that your heart is burning with you. Because you know that the life you're living is not the one that Christ wants you to live. Many of you, you grew up in the church, as I said before, grew up in the church. You know the Bible. You know, because the Holy Spirit has been nudging you every day. You know. But there's a warfare going on. There is a warfare going on. There's a great controversy going on. There's a fight for your life. There's a fight for your life. Just like Anne's apartment, who found his little lady, who assisted him to make it back to the right stadium. We are here today from the Jealous Seventh Adventist Church. We are here from the White Horses SDA Church. I've seen persons here from Philadelphia SDA Church. We are here just like a little lady to say to you, we can guide you back to Jesus. Is there anyone who wants to say, Lord, I want to come back to Jesus. Because this world is too much for me. You, you, you know, listen to listen, me, listen, listen, young people. I've said it before. I've been to many funeral services. I've seen in the casket young, strong men in the casket. Young men with potential in the casket. Go down to a crisis grave. 
And I'm sure they would have heard the message but didn't heed the call. I've seen young women in many pretty caskets. Young, beautiful women with potential but did not allow the Holy Spirit to lead them. Gone down in Christless graves. I'm saying to a young man this evening, don't allow the devil to rob you of what God has in store for you. I'm saying to a young woman this afternoon, don't allow the devil to rob you of what God has in store for you. I'm saying to an older folk this evening, don't allow the devil to rob you of what God has in store for you. I've come to the end of this presentation. And I want to say to you at this time, many of us don't understand what God has in store for us. But I want to say to you, if there's ever a time you need to know who Jesus is, it is now. Amen. If there's ever a time you know who Jesus is, it is now. When he comes, many of us are going to be surprised. And many of us are going to say, but I remembered when the elder Moore did the presentation and made the appeal. But I didn't listen to his voice. I'm saying to you at this time, you're hearing my voice. Don't allow the coming of our Lord and Savior to be as a thief in the night for you. It says in St. Matthew 24 verse 43, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken in. Today we are watchmen. Today we are watchmen. And we are here to say to you in the district of Ponside, we are saying to you we are watching the signs and the signs are saying that God is about to put his appearing. We don't want to go to heaven without you. And let me quickly say to you now, all of us who are right here are sinners saved by God's grace. We're not coming to tell you that we are more righteous than you are. No. We are coming to say from one sinner to another sinner, come know a man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come and know him. Because he makes your life different. Amen. He makes your life different. Seems to know who Jesus is. And the songwriter says, in a very popular song, that we all know quite well. He says, Ride out your storm. God is there with you. You may not feel it, but you are not alone. You are hurting now. Huh? But the morning is coming. Just hold on to Jesus and ride out your storm. Amen. I'm saying to Ponside, my heart is heavy at this point in time. When I look around, too many young men in just going down to crisis graves. Too many young women they're just going down to the crisis graves. Because they don't understand God is saying you can ride out your storm. God is saying I can, I can help you through it. Don't let the world fool you. I can help you through it. And so as you're about to depart from each other this evening, I'm saying let's be in mind. God can make it what you want it to be. And he can make you in, your, in what he wants to make you into. He can make it into a person that is one who serves him. So all you have to do is to hold on to Jesus. Just hold on to Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we have come and we are presenting the word today. We are presenting the word to the district of Ponside. Lord, my heart at this time is heavy. 
Because when I drive along the street, when I walk along the street, so many young men are living in sin. So many young men. Lord, they are living separate and apart from you. Lord, they are getting themselves involved in things that are unlike you. So many of our young men, Lord, are getting themselves involved, Lord, in crime. And I'm saying, Lord, this time, send your Holy Spirit to touch a young man. Even right now, to understand, you need to put aside the gun, Jesus. Put aside the knife, Jesus. Put aside the cooking. And give his life to you, Jesus. Some young man needs to give his life over to you. Some young man, Jesus, needs to understand that you can lead him in the path of righteousness. Some young man, Jesus, needs you to touch him at this time. Some young man, Jesus, needs a breakthrough because the devil is pulling him down. The Lord is trying so hard to break free. But his friends are telling him, you're soft. But you don't know, Jesus. It's best to be soft for you, Jesus. That it seems to be strong in the face of evil. Can you understand that you, Jesus, can lead him? You, Jesus, can take charge of him. There's a young woman who is trapped at this time because somehow she believes that she can't make it unless the man is beside her side. But let some young woman understand you don't need him to be beside you. All oh, she needs is Jesus. And you will provide for her. There's some young child at this time, Lord, who's possessed by the devil. And I'm saying, send your Holy Spirit to pass that young child, Jesus, who is possessed who is thinking of taking their life because they can't take it no more. Just that young child, Jesus, who someone is about to take their life, Jesus. Lord, you're speaking to me this time. There's a young child who needs deliverance, Jesus. Can't take it no more. Just that young child, Jesus, to understand that they can turn to you. I don't understand that, Lord, you are more than capable. You are more than able to take them through their trials. Lord, send your Holy Spirit to move you up inside, Jesus. And turn the place upside down, Jesus. So you, Jesus, can be glorified. The time is short, Jesus. You are about to put in your appearance. The signs are telling that, Lord, your coming is nearing. And too many of us are living in sin. That's someone at this time, Jesus. To give their lives to you, Jesus. Lord, you're speaking to me again. Lord, there's some young man who has a gun about to do some crime, Jesus. Does that young man don't understand? The gun is not the way. Take it, someone's life. Is not the way, Jesus. Help us to turn away from evil, Jesus. And give away what is evil. Put aside that gun, Jesus. That gun can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. Lord, we need you. This district needs you, Jesus. The era of side needs you, Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit, Jesus, to touch somebody. Lord, you have sent us here for a purpose. And we're only here to testify of you. And of your goodness. And of your grace. Lord, just take charge. We are about to leave. But I know your Holy Spirit, Jesus, to stay within this community. And to move through the hearts of each and every person. To understand you have something better for their lives. We are thanking you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for those who have listened in their homes. Those who have been watching on Facebook. Those who are watching on YouTube. We thank you, Lord, that they have listened to your words. Help, Lord, that this message 
will go forth and touch someone's heart even in cyberspace at this time. That they will try to find a church, find a pastor, find someone who can take them to the path of being baptized and giving their lives to you. Thank you again, Lord, for everything you have done. We leave everything, Lord, and everyone in your hands, in your sons in Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Amen.